Good morning. morning. Welcome to God's house today. Today is Trinity Sunday here at Trinity Lutheran Church. I invite you to follow along in the order of service, our path of worship today, and the hymns and the messages. This morning I ask you, what does forgiveness look like in your world, in your life, with your families, with your workplaces, with your enemies? What does forgiveness look like and how does that happen on the foundation of our triune God today? We'll open with our first hymn, Holy, Holy, Holy. Please stand. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. If we claim to be without sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. Let us confess our sins. Holy God, gracious Father, I am sinful by nature and have sinned against you in my thoughts, words, and actions. I have not loved you with my whole heart. I have not loved others as I should. I deserve both punishment, both now and forevermore. But Jesus, my 
Savior paid for my sins with his innocent suffering and death. Trusting in him, I pray, God have mercy on me. Our gracious Father in heaven has been merciful to us. He sent his only Son, Jesus Christ, who gave his life as the atoning sacrifice for the sins of the whole world. Therefore, as a called servant of Christ, and by his authority, I forgive you all of your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. For this holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty God and Father, dwelling in majesty and mystery, filling and renewing all creation by your eternal Spirit, and manifesting your saving grace through our Lord Jesus Christ, in mercy cleanse our hearts and lips, that free from doubt and fear, we may worship you, one true God, immortal God, with your Son and the Holy Spirit, living and reigning now and forever. Amen. You may be seated. A lesson from Numbers chapter 6. The Lord told Moses to speak to Aaron and to his sons and to tell them to bless the Israelites with these words. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look on you with favor and give you peace. In this way, they will put my name on the Israelites, and I will bless them. The word of the Lord. The choir will sing next.
A lesson from Romans 5. Therefore, since we have been justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Through him, we also have obtained access by faith into this grace in which we stand. And we rejoice confidently on the basis of our hope for the glory of God. Not only this, but we also rejoice confidently in our sufferings, because we know that suffering produces patient endurance. Patient endurance produces tested character, and tested character produces hope. And hope will not put us to shame, because God's love has been poured out into our hearts by the Holy Spirit who was given to us. The word of the Lord. Please stand for the reading of the Gospel. Holy Gospel is recorded in John chapter 16. Jesus told his disciples the night before he died, I still have many things to tell you, but you cannot bear them now. But when he, the Spirit of truth, comes, he will guide you into all truth. For he will not speak on his own, but whatever he hears, he will speak. He will also declare to you what is to come. He will glorify me because he will take from me what is mine and declare to you. Everything the Father has is mine. This is why I said that he takes from what is mine and will declare it to you. The Gospel of the Lord. You may be seated. The children may come forward. I know there's children here. Where does Pastor Luchterhand, does he sit down and stand up? Or he probably can't get back up again. Uh, maybe I can't get back up again. Oh, should we? You guys can like, well, let's do this. Is this everybody? There's more coming. Um, I'm going to find out if you know a person from the Bible in the Old Testament. His name is Joseph. How many know of the Joseph from the Old Testament? Two hands, three hands. Your hand was first. Can you tell me one thing you know about the Joseph from the Old Testament? I think you're thinking of Moses. But good guess. Moses, he's a great guy too. But good story, because that fits into later. Now you're thinking. Were you thinking of Moses too? Joseph. Uh, yes. Yes, that's the one. And that's the story, right? His brothers sold him. Do you have brothers and sisters? Do you do naughty things to them? How many do naughty things to their brothers and sisters? If we claim to be without sin. Uh, how many... How many have had brothers and sisters and, and friends do naughty things to them? How does that feel? How, do we, how would it feel to be thrown into a pit? Very bad, very terrible. Um, Joseph's brothers were so angry at him, and by the way, he had some of it coming, but that didn't make what they did right. Joseph's brothers were so mad at him that they sold him off, and he, went, he lived a very, very difficult life. But we're going to find out later what happened to Joseph. Do you remember? 
second in command of like the whole world because Egypt was very, very powerful at the time and God blessed him through really tough times. And then what happens at the end of the story? Do you know? His brothers come back and, and they needed him. And they went, oh my goodness gracious. We treated him terrible. And then what did Joseph do? He forgave them. Can you watch for that story in the sermon today? And can you watch, what's your name? Evelyn? It's a pretty name. Can you watch for what Evelyn just said? He forgave them. We're going to think about that today in the message. And you watch for that story in the sermon. Let's pray. Dear Jesus, bless your words that we heard today and continue to bless our time in your house with our families and with you and with each other. In Jesus' name, amen. We will continue with him 586. Come Holy Ghost, Creator blessed. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless our hearts and minds in the moments we have with your word and each other today. In Jesus Christ, 
the only Savior, our, our Savior and, and Shepherd. Amen. Psalm 130. I will explain this a little bit later, but it's called a Psalm of Ascents. If you, O Lord, kept a record of sins, O Lord, who could stand? But there with you is forgiveness. Therefore, we may serve you with reverent fear. Do do you remember the difference between Moses and Joseph and Jacob and Esau and Saul who became Paul? Do you remember these stories? Twin boys grabbing at each other before they were even in the world out of mama's tummy. The heel grabber. And though they were twins, they were nothing alike. One was mama's boy, tied literally to the apron strings. The other one was papa's hunter. Go get me something to eat, my boy. And something terrible happened, and I won't spend hours explaining to you the birthright of the Old Testament. But what you need to know is the heel grabber did something terribly awful to his father when he was dying and against his brother. And it was mom's idea. And it was so terrible that this boy had to run for his life only to find out that mom's brother was not so great either. Laban, the conniver, was just like mom and just like him, and they connived each other, and through it all, God blessed him and gave him two families, not one. You can read about that later. And when all of those families grew and became two clans, he realized it was time to meet his brother again. It was time to go back. And he literally lost a night of sleep and a physical wrestling match with the Lord in prayer. And with a knot in his stomach and a chink in his hip, he walked down to the valley. And scriptures tell us that Esau ran to Jacob and put his arms around him and kissed his neck, and they wept together. Forgiveness matters. The very next generation, the very next story is about the man the kids were talking about up here just a little while ago, Jacob's sons. All of those sons... What a hot mess that was. Favoritism was a problem again between moms and dads. Two families now split up. Favoritism among the brothers, among the parents. And Joseph was no saint either. He, he loved it. He loved the nice coats and the nice things and the nice attention and the cool dreams. And then some of the things the children and I were talking about happened. Cisterns. Human trafficking. Slavery. And then, accused for something he never did. Prison. And then he met two two really cool guys in prison. And they go, we'll remember you. And they didn't. But one person remembered him in that prison. And the theme of this story said several times in that part of Genesis, the Lord was with Joseph. The Lord was with Joseph. The Lord was with Joseph. And as one of the little kinders said, God made him second in command in the most powerful nation on earth at the time. And people came and begged him for things, including his own brothers. And do you remember... So one of the last stories of Genesis. You remember the brothers still did what our psalmist did in the psalm today. What if? What if Jacob kept track? What if Joseph kept track? What if dad 
And now dad's gone. And they connived a forgery letter. Um, Your dad says you should love us, was the forgery letter. And Joseph saw right through it. And he cried. You know why he cried? Because he then and there realized that his brothers wouldn't believe that he would forgive them. You meant it for harm and bad. The Lord used it for good for the rescuing of many people. It's the last message of the book of Genesis. Forgiveness matters. And what about Saul? Saul, who was tending to the coat check at the stoning of Stephen, one of the first Christian martyrs of the New Testament era. Saul, who, when he became powerful enough, got letters, permission, documentation to travel the entire Mediterranean world to imprison, put to death if necessary, split up people who had faith in Jesus and professed it publicly. Saul, who set out on his way to do just that very thing and had the power and the ability in the Roman world to do that very thing, met Jesus. And when he met Jesus, his whole world changed, including his name. He was baptized by the priest. He was trained in a miraculous way by Jesus and the other brothers. And he was named Paul. And every time you write and read one of the letters of Paul to the Christian churches, he went around that Mediterranean world not killing Christians, but winning souls for Jesus. And every time he writes, 1 Corinthians 15, the great resurrection chapter, you remember what he says, like seven verses in? By the grace of God, I am what I am. And his grace on me was not without effect. And Saul, who became Paul, had to perilously remember every day of his life, forgiveness matters. If you, O oh Lord, were keeping track of Saul, the murderous man, I'm done. But with you, there is forgiveness, and I can serve you now with reverent fear. And what about Jesus? His friends his enemies, and everybody else in between who didn't know how to figure him out. We're told already in the first chapter of the Gospel of John, his own people didn't recognize him, and they fulfilled the prophecies of Isaiah, said there's nothing in him that we should want him, and they dished him out. His hometown, Nazareth, they wanted to throw him off of a cliff. 4,000 feet dropped down. His friends, the crowds, how often would they change from eating bread to saying, your discussion about bread is too hard. We're gone. We're done. We're out. One minute, singing and praising Hosanna, Lord, save us. Lord, come to our rescue. And just a few days later, shouting and screaming at their top of their lungs for his death. Judas? For money? Peter? To rescue his own skin, his own reputation, his own self-worth? Pilate? I really don't care what you think truth is. I have the power. No, you don't. Roman soldiers? Hired mercenaries whose job and Friday fun it was to kill people and beat them to a bloody pulp? They enjoyed it. And with steel and wood and his body coming together, our Savior says, What? Father, forgive them. They don't, they don't know. They have no idea what they're doing. From his best and closest of friends to his worst of enemies, Father, see the blood pouring out on this dirt. See, see my empty tomb three days from now. Only because of that, forgive them. 
They don't get it, but they will. Those who believe in me through the message. It is Trinity Sunday today, and I would just like for you to read or have me read from one of my favorite Christian authors. His name is Dan Deutschlander. Uh, he's now in heaven, but he wrote a book that um, is very, very people, coffee table friendly, The Splendor of Christian Doctrine, Grace Abounds. And when writing about the, lo- the lesson from the gospel today, the Trinity, he says this, We can't help but be struck by the beauty of the words that the members of the Trinity speak to and about one another. Read the Gospel of John. You can almost see the glow on Jesus' face as he talks about the Father. Everything he does, he does out of love and obedience to the Father who sent him. No less the Father, when he speaks, he points to the Son as the sole and great object of his delight, to whom all mankind should give heed. And when Jesus speaks of the Spirit, it is as though everything was for the glory of the Holy Spirit, who comes from the Father and the Son. And when the Holy Spirit speaks... Who and what does he speak about the Son? Everything is about the Son. He speaks so that we would remember and think always and only about Jesus. And then this parenthetical remark. Just imagine what life would be like if husbands, wives, friends spoke that way about one another. So it is Trinity Sunday and forgiveness matters and I... And I Know and believe in my heart that all of us have the power of the Holy Spirit of the Word to take a page from the unity of the Trinity and watch Father, Son, and Holy Spirit live in beautiful unity and, and as he said the night before he died, may they be one, Father, as we, as we are, are one. Because the reality is When we personalize those stories we heard, every one of us could identify with any number of those characters. The twin boys, we're no better than Jacob and Esau as we heel grab at one another. Joseph and his brothers and his his father and, and mothers, we're no better when we kick and scream and in our jealous rage and our 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 self propositions and our personal agendas even among people we love. We're no better than Saul when we split and divide the church for our own agendas and the ministry of God's kingdom. All of you who have been around the kingdom of God know, that, know that, that even the kingdom of God work is not immune to sin and division. Nor am I, nor are you. I can tell you stories of people I wronged as a pastor. We're no different than Peter and Judas trying to rescue our own selves, get us something out of an earthly benefit. What's in it for me with this disciple thing, Jesus? And realize that in the meantime, we were betraying and, and, and denying him when we shouldn't have. Pilate and Roman soldiers, how often do we beat and kick and grab at our Savior, when things just don't seem to go our way and and we're tempted just for a moment to say, how dare you, God? Why this? Why now? What this? And the whole time, Jesus is laying on the cross. Father, forgive them. Father, empower them to forgive each other because forgiveness matters. Two more things. I told you that I would explain the psalm of ascent. So here's the cool thing. Psalm 130 was many psalms strung together that families, tribes, clans would sing as they were ascending up the hill to the big holy temple in Jerusalem for all their festivals. They would pause and camp and sing an ascent song, pause and camp and sing an ascent psalm. And, and just imagine, as the big, huge tabernacle, tem- temple, Jerusalem city, the big white city, not their little country farm uh, t- uh, synagogues back in the Galilee, became closer and closer and closer. And they would say, Lord, we're going up there with, with you. There's forgiveness. Therefore, we may serve with reverent fear. 
Go with the psalmist. Go with Jacob and his brothers. Go with Joseph and his family. Go with the psalmist. Go with Peter. Go with all those who believed in me through their message, Jesus says, and see a God who does not keep track. There's a movie, I forget the name of it, uh, it's about God. Morgan Freeman is in it, plays this distinguished character of God. And in the, there's a scene in that movie where the funny character has his sins open up in a filing cabinet drawer all the way across the room. Some of you are getting it, I think. One day, you will be with God and you will meet him Alone, per se, but not alone. Someday, we'll pass through this life. Mr. Petala did, Wednesday. Someday, God will come back and bring us all. Maybe that day will come this afternoon or next week. But you will meet God. And you will say with the psalmist, Lord... If you kept a record of all the stuff I did, I'm done. But with you, there is forgiveness. And Jesus, our shepherd, in eternity, won't open up a filing cabinet drawer and go, see, I've been keeping track. No, he remembers your sin no more. As far as the east is from the west. And he will say, come, you who are blessed by my Father, take the inheritance that I have prepared for you. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, will enter you into his heavenly glory because of Christ. Go with the psalmist today. Go with all of those Bible characters and say, Lord, if you, O Lord, kept a record, but with you there is forgiveness, and forgiveness matters. The peace of Christ, which goes beyond all understanding, does guard and keep your hearts and your minds through faith in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. I believe that the individual who was preparing the bulletin today meant to delete the Apostles' Creed, and even if they didn't, we're not doing it because we're going to the Athanasian Creed. Please stand. <laughs> Pastor Luchterhand put a really nice introduction into the Athanasian Creed in the beginning of your service folders today. I entrust that to you. Oh, i got to find the page. Whoever wishes to be saved must, above all else, hold to the Christian faith. Whoever does not keep this faith, whoever in all points, will certainly Now this is the true Christian faith. We worship one God, three persons, and three For each person, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit is distinct. But the unity of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit is one, equal in glory, and majesty. What the Father is, so is the Son, and so is the Holy Spirit. The Father is uncreated, the Son is uncreated, the Holy Spirit is uncreated. The Father is infinite, the Son is infinite, the Holy Spirit is infinite. The Father is eternal, the Son is eternal, the Holy Spirit eternal. In the same way, the Father is almighty, the Son is almighty, the Holy Spirit is almighty. So the Father is God, the Son is God, the Holy Spirit is God. So the Father is Lord, the Son is Lord, the Holy Spirit is Lord. For just as the Christian truth compels us to confess each person individually to be God and Lord, The Father is neither made nor created nor begotten of anyone. The Son is neither made nor created but is begotten of the Father alone. The Holy Spirit is neither made nor created nor begotten but proceeds from the Father and the Son. So 
And within this Trinity, none comes before or after, none is greater or inferior. So that in every way, as stated before, all three persons are to be worshipped as one God, and one God worshipped as three persons. It is furthermore necessary for eternal salvation truly to believe that our Lord Jesus Christ also took on human flesh. Now this is the true Christian faith. He is God, eternally begotten from the nature of the Father, and He is man, born in time, from the nature of His mother, fully God, fully man, with rational soul and human flesh. And though He is both God and man, Christ is not two persons but one. One indeed, not by mixture of the nature, natures, but by unity in one person. He suffered for our salvation, descended into hell, rose the third day from the dead. At his coming, all people will rise to their own bodies uh, to rise for their personal deeds. This is the true Christian faith. You may be seated for the prayer. We'll continue with the responsive prayer of the church, including in our special prayers. Um, I just learned this morning that God in his infinite wisdom this last Wednesday called to his eternal glory our dear friend and brother in Christ, Jim Pedela. In our special prayers, we will pray for his family and friends and all of us who grieve that loss. We also have a special prayer on behalf of my parents, Don and Elaine Helwig, who have recently celebrated their 60th wedding anniversary. We will include them in our our prayers as well today. Almighty God and Father, we thank you for all your mercies, especially for the gift of your Son, through whom you have revealed your gracious will. We praise you for the Holy Spirit and his working through the means of grace. Strengthen and defend your church, that your word and sacraments and faith may grow and toward all increase. Keep our children in the grace of their baptisms. Enable their parents to train them in lives of faith. Raise up Christians to serve you in the ministry of the Word and all the godly laws of life. Preserve our nation in justice and honor. Guide and bless all who make, administer, and judge our laws. Let your blessing rest on planting and harvesting, commerce and industry, medicine and science, the arts and culture. Protect all who travel and care for those whose work is difficult or dangerous. Comfort all who are, all who are in sorrow or in need, sickness and adversity. Remember those who suffer persecution for their faith. Have mercy on those who for death draws near. Dear Heavenly Father, comfort the family and friends of Jim Pedela, whom you have now called to eternal glory in heaven. We praise you for making him your child through holy baptism and sustaining his faith through the good news about Jesus our Savior. We thank you for the blessings you brought to your church, this community, and his family through his whole life of Christian service. May the peace and promises of your son atoning sacrifice on the cross and his empty tomb bring assurance to the hearts of all who mourn, Help us always to live in joyful anticipation of that day when you call us from our graves and reunite us with Jim and all of the believers in in perfect bliss in your presence forever.
page turn. Eternal God, your love endures forever. With mercy and might, you have sustained Don and Elaine Helwig with many blessings as they now give you thanks for 60 years of marriage. You have been the source of strength they have enjoyed for the spring of the faithfulness they have shared. As they rely on you for every good thing, we ask that you would continue to go with them as their God and Lord. Preserve them and their faith by your word. Consecrate their hearts to each other and your service to the word. And lead them forth with your peace. In Jesus' name, amen. Hear us, Lord, as we pray in silence. We remember with thanksgiving those who have loved and served you who are now at rest from their labors. Console those who mourn in living in sadness. Keep us in the truth of faith and bring us at last to the joy of heaven. Grant these blessings, Father, for the sake of Jesus who died and rose again. Amen. We invite you to um, think about and uh, enjoy the next Offertory by the organist as we think about our gifts for the Lord. We also encourage you to take some time to sign uh, the friendship registers here at Trinity at the end of the pew. We'll continue with the next hymn, hymn 715. It's actually printed in your service folder if you'd like.
Please stand for prayer. Almighty God, we thank you for teaching us the things you want us to believe and do. Help us by your Holy Spirit to keep your word in pure hearts that we may be strengthened in faith, guided in holiness, and comforted in life and in death through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. You may be seated for the song by the choir. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look on you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Our closing hymn.
Good morning. I have a couple of things from Pastor Lochter Han. Member pictorial directory info in the bulletin. Copies of the ministry plan for 22-23 on the table in the fellowship hall. I think we put them back. Oh yeah, it's there. The table is there. Um, congregational meeting on June 26th after worship. Sign up for the Wednesday funeral meal for the pedalas in the fellowship hall. And last, my brothers, sisters, families, siblings would like to invite all of you to greet our parents after the service. There's cake. Um, please eat all of it. And please, I hope and pray that all of you get a chance to at least say hello to Don and Elaine. Um, and thanks uh, for letting us wreck the place yesterday afternoon. I think we put most of it back. Um, and it's, it's good to be home. Uh, blessings to Trinity and your ministry. Um, God bless and have a great summer.